In this video, I will be giving every one-star school in college football 25 10 years to see how good that they can become. How much do they grow? And they will be graded on a whole bunch of different categories. What's their win-loss record over those 10 years? How many four and five stars do they recruit? How many conference championships, bowl games do they win? Do they win any awards? Do they make the playoffs or even get further than that? How many NFL players are they producing? And what's the average overall class that they are bringing in year to year? We are going to be grading every one of these one-star schools on every category you could possibly think of to determine who does more in a decade. And this is also just for fun experiments as a lot of people will post one-star rebuilds and they'll take these one-star schools and bring them to a national championship in a couple of years. But what does the computer do at a one-star school? Can the computer take a one-star school to a national championship over the course of the dynasties that you may be playing will one of these one-star schools have a chance to become great or will they just stay bad forever now when i say one-star school that's a lot of schools to keep track of so when i say one star i mean the one stars not one and a half stars because that's a lot of schools to keep up with if i do one and a half stars there are 13 true one-star schools it is Arkansas State, Ball State, Charlotte, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, Kennesaw State, Jacksonville State, Kent State, New Mexico, New Mexico State, Old Dominion, South Alabama, and Rice. All of them will be competing head-to-head, -head and we will be able to determine who is going to be the best of these one-star schools. So without further ado, let's get into simulating year one, and I will show you the results from every single season, everything that goes down. And at the end of the video, I'll have a final tally of everything that goes down. So if you want to just skip to the results, it'll be at the end of the video. Simming through the first season, I also just want to see who wins Heisman. If anything crazy happens, you know, outside of these one-star schools, It'll be fun to see. Cam Ward wins Heisman, which is really cool. Haven't seen that one very often as, you know, there are a couple of usual suspects, but Cam Ward is not one of them that I typically see. Now, as we go into what the teams did, I'll be showing you the results, their records each and every year, their bowl game success, if they had any conference championship appearances, any awards, and if anything pops up, you will see it. A lot of the teams are scattered out throughout the non-power fives, the most prevalent conference being the Sun Belt, where a number of the teams are. And I will say if any team is worthy of a move up in conference whether it be to the american athletics or beyond that into a power five we will do that to try to help them continue to grow you know if they're just sitting there dominating their smaller conference i don't think it'd be beneficial to keep them in there but it'll be one of those things where we'll kind of judge it as we go and if a team is worthy of actually moving up but as it pertains to year one about half the teams floated around 500 or beyond old dominion was the only one to make a conference championship and not only that they did win it so that's big for them the best and worst record throughout the regular season Kent State went nine and four which was the best and the worst was Paul State going two and ten Florida State won your national championship South Alabama lost their bowl game Old Dominion won theirs we had Arkansas State win their bowl game we had Jacksonville State destroy in theirs and then Kent State won theirs and this is just unfair who who did this I, that is so messed up how in the the computing system do you get georgia versus new mexico in a bowl game obviously new mexico loses but rice despite having seven wins didn't even make a bowl game arkansas state gets a couple of players drafted old dominion gets a player drafted and rice also has a round four player now i'm interested to see how the computer is going to recruit over the next couple of years as to start off this season, not a single one of our one-star schools even was in the top 100 for recruiting classes. I don't know if any of these schools are ever going to get a five-star, but you'd hope to see a couple of four-stars. But no one really did anything in year one when it came to recruiting. So if you had to give like a winner to year one, I think Old Dominion winning a conference championship in a bowl game probably gives them the edge. But Kent State went nine and four and won their bowl game. There's a couple of other schools that did pretty decently. But the highest ranking recruiting class was not even not only top 100, not even top 110. So let's move on into season two. Heisman Trophy goes to wide receiver Tyler Brown out of Clemson. I notice a lot of receivers in the sim will just go nuts and have like 20 touchdowns touchdowns let's take a look at the top 25 do any of our teams make it i mean it's going to be really big if any of these teams ever touch the top 25 we see utah state up there which is pretty interesting and bowling green made it so a couple of, of whatever schools north texas as well kind of made it but we see a big surprise here in year two we already have some action the head coach for kennesaw state wins coach of the year and not only that but they also had the assistant coach of the year so kennesaw state had a massive year and we'll take a look at 
that, but we see that Kansas State won the national championship. It's no surprise though that Kennesaw State was the big winners here in year two. They had an amazing 12 and two overall record. And aside from Kennesaw State, not a whole lot of other teams really were all that successful. New Mexico had a winning record. South Alabama had a winning record. Jacksonville State had another winning record. That's back-to-back -back years for them. And Georgia State had a winning record. Everyone else, though, losing records left and right. And not a whole lot of success elsewhere. But I think if you're giving out the award for who won Season 2, it's pretty obvious it's going to be Kennesaw State. It's not only were they award winners, most wins, and everything like that but they also had the conference championship victory as they were able to beat Sam Houston and then taking a quick look at the bowl results we had Georgia State and Kennesaw State win their bowl games but Arkansas State, Jacksonville State, Kent State, New Mexico State and South Alabama were all losers in their bowl game including Kent State getting matched up against Tennessee which is also a little unfair but Arkansas State did have a drafted player. Kennesaw State did as well, and they're up to two stars in prestige after that last season, as are New Mexico, who had a drafted player as well. Only three of those schools had drafted players. And then looking at the recruiting class in year two, we see a massive step up as Rice gets the 60th class in the nation. They went from 118 last year all the way to 60th. That is a massive jump. But not only that, we had Jacksonville State also get the 76th class which is pretty nice for them so two schools did get into the top 100 the rest of the schools about the same success as they had last year so let's move into season three where let's see if kennesaw state can replicate their success but the heisman winner will be an smu wide receiver with 17 touchdowns that is going to be two wide receivers back-to-back -back years winning the Heisman Trophy and taking a look at the top 25. Uh, you see a lot of usual suspects here and a lot of interesting teams that don't typically make it up that high. UAB was able to get into the top 25, so we've at least seen some random schools kind of crack that top 25, but none of our one stars quite yet. And the national champions is going to be Arizona. UAB also beat Michigan in the first round of the playoffs, which is really wild that they made it in and were able to take down Michigan so uh, that's good for them let's hope one of our schools can eventually get to that point in this third season Charlotte was able to win 10 games Jacksonville State was able to win 10 games the only two teams to get those double digit victories and the worst records of this season went to both Georgia Southern and Kent State who had three and nine records so not quite the, the levels of Kennesaw State reached in year two and speaking of Kennesaw State they sunk all all the way down to a four win season so not a whole lot good for them arkansas state was able to get a conference championship and look at this absolute like privilege from alabama like what is this they won four games and they got a bowl game how is that even allowed i know it's you know based on where they ranked in the conference and everything but four games one you should not get a bowl game for that but speaking of those bowl games arkansas state ball state charlotte jacksonville state all won their bowl games new mexico and south alabama lost their bowl games so that's going to be a four and two overall record for our one star schools and as we take a look at the draft results look at charlotte they had a 10 win season won a bowl game and had six players drafted i think it's pretty easy to say charlotte won this first season kennesaw state also had a player drafted so charlotte though i think is definitely the season three winners here we have some more decent recruiting classes last year rice had the 60th class this year they improved to the 59th class and we have our first team on the the board Kennesaw State was able to get themselves a four-star player which is huge the only team now in the first three years with a four-star or better prospect I'm really doubting the idea of a team getting a five-star but seeing a team already in year three getting a four-star is pretty cool so you know we'll see how many guys are going to be able to get that high of a prospect but a couple of teams did get in the top 100 we've seen rice kennesaw state jacksonville state charlotte and south alabama all getting into the top 100 the rest of the schools do what they usually do and that's populate the bottom of the top classes board but let's take a look at some of these players one angel for rice he was a star player a three-star prospect was pretty good and here's the four-star unfortunately he is normal so he's not going to be an amazing player but still a four-star is nice to have and I also just wanted to shout out this uh, Iowa having a quarterback throw for nine touchdowns 
they score like nine touchdowns in a season, so that's pretty spectacular. Heisman winner here in year four is a Utah State quarterback. And Utah State, I seen them ranked, you know, last season, and now they're here in the top 10. Utah State's becoming a powerhouse. We also see Florida, Atlantic, and UTEP round out the top 25, so those are a couple of odd schools getting in there. And we almost had a spectacular Utah State versus Florida Atlantic playoff matchup. Didn't happen, though, and Clemson will win the national championship. And as we just take a peek at the records for this season, I want to let you guys know that I am really into doing any of these challenge videos, as this is my first try at something like this. I also have a dinosaur series that I'm currently doing but if you want to see any other challenge videos I will be more than happy to do them for you just let me know what you want to see if you want to see something like this if you want to see me rebuild a one-star school or or do whatever really I'll, I'm down for whatever dynasty road to glory just let me know what you want to see if you make the challenge in the comment section I just might do it looking at the conference championships though Arkansas State was the only team to make it and not only that they won it Teams like Ball State, Kennesaw State, and New Mexico all won their bowl games. Arkansas State, despite winning a conference championship, did not. Georgia State didn't win a bowl game and South Alabama also lost there so no team really went crazy this season and you wonder if a team like Rice is eventually going to start to be good as you know having two top 60 classes back to back for a team that was starting off as a one star it's pretty big I would hope that they can actually get to that point where they can be good they have some prospects that can help them do that Jacksonville State did put up another good recruiting class and in the first four years Jacksonville State has won eight games nine games 10 games so maybe they can be good eventually and this was also a really massive year for the four-star prospects to come in. Charlotte got a four-star. Kennesaw State back-to-back -back years with a four-star. South Alabama had a four-star. And Old Dominion was able to snag two four-star prospects. And a couple of top 100 classes we've seen. Charlotte, Kennesaw State, Jacksonville State, New Mexico, Old Dominion, South Alabama, all in the top 100, also Arkansas State as well. In year one, none of the 13 schools were in the top 100. Year four, seven were in the top 100, so that's some real improvement. And unfortunately for Charlotte, it was a normal development player. It was really exciting to see that they got a four-star quarterback, but he is normal dev. It still is a four-star quarterback, though, and you could see Rice. You're starting to see Rice get a couple of players. I showed you a really good one last year they have a good one this year and Jacksonville State has a really interesting quarterback Deacon Durth an 82 overall player and I also said Jacksonville State they put up three winning seasons in the first four years they could be pretty good teams are starting to get their quarterbacks Arkansas State could he be the guy and Greg Marcus things are starting to get a little interesting as we move on to the next season where another Utah State player wins Heisman two straight and it's two different players a quarterback last year wide receiver this year Utah State once again is up there in the polls and they've really become unnecessarily good in the top 25 though none of our teams make it in there unfortunately so but the national champions are Notre Dame Utah State got a four seed once again and was not able to even win a playoff game but a Florida Notre Dame national championship is the final outcome and look at that finally Rice was able to win some games they got eight wins and Despite some really nice prospects and some nice recruiting classes this past season, obviously you're not going to see all the benefits of that in year one of all these players. A lot of those guys probably didn't play or got redshirted. So for this season, Rice got the eight wins. Jacksonville State once again got nine wins. This was the season with the worst overall record from all these teams. Only three schools had above 500 records. Jacksonville State, though, did win a conference championship, which is great to see. And when it came to bowl games, only four of our teams made a bowl game. Only Georgia State was able to win a bowl game. So overall success wasn't there for our schools this season. But despite the lack of wins this season, this was the best when it came to having players drafted. Seven of the teams had players selected, including Kent State. Look at this, a first round sophomore end. That is ridiculous. A sophomore redshirt player. I didn't even see him but he got drafted in the first round. So Kent State out here producing a beastly player. And when we look at the recruiting classes once more, only one four-star player was able to come to one of our schools. And once again, Kennesaw State, 
Three straight years but a four star. No one else could say that as we've had not a lot of four stars really go to our schools. We had a couple last year, but Kennesaw State in the lead when it comes to recruiting. They had the single best season with the award winning, the 12 win season. So Kennesaw State's really doing their thing right now. I think it's them and Jacksonville State are the teams that may be doing the most success. And I'm going to make one of those executive decisions. Jacksonville State has had a winning season every single year, except for one has had among the best recruiting classes. And right now they have an 84 overall sophomore quarterback. So I feel like in kind of trying to move them up, it's not a bad idea. And if teams like Rice and Charlotte can be in the American Athletics, I think this team can be in the American Athletics. They are a two and a half star program. And while I'm not moving them up to a power five school, I think moving them up to the American Athletics is more than fair. They have a lot of nice young talent and I think they're gonna be not the worst team in that conference. I know it says Jacksonville State's overall is like a 75. The overalls are a little weird in this game. I don't think that's what they are at all. They seem a lot better than that, but it didn't give me a pop up for the Heisman Trophy winner either this season. So it did for all the other seasons. I'm just gonna assume a Utah State player won Heisman Trophy this season. Now Jacksonville State did have a down year, but I expect that going from Conference USA to the American Athletics, they had four wins and they are still a team that's gonna be returning a lot of their good players. So. I'm not too worried about them there. South Alabama was all the way down at a 2 and 10 win season, and no team really was spectacular. Kent State had an 8 and 5 year, so back-to-back -back years where nobody really had like a big double-digit win season or anything crazy. Old Dominion did make the conference championship but lost, and then they lost their bowl game, and when it comes to those bowls, Kent State I think overall did have the best year probably going eight and five and winning their bowl game. Georgia State won their bowl game, but Georgia Southern and New Mexico did not. Your national champions are Iowa State as they took down Boise State. It's really weird to see some of the national championship games that you get. Not much in the drafted player section as just two teams had players drafted, Rice and Charlotte. The overall recruiting, Kennesaw State's record did get broken. No four star player for them. But one team did get a four star and that is Jacksonville State. I really think this team can be good and with Deacon Dirth going into his junior season and the team that was pretty talented returning a lot of its good players, I think it's going to be a solid team. The recruiting overall though did take a downturn. Rice had once again like the 59th rated class and they're just not doing much like they had an eight and five season last year, but they haven't really made like a big splash and they've had consistently like the best recruiting classes. So that's been kind of disappointing. And when you look at Ball State, though, they got a really nice right tackle. So they could be at least if they're not having a great season, putting on themselves on the board with like a first or a second round prospect and look at Jacksonville State, man. Now they got some really nice overall players like I, I still says they're like a 75 overall. They, that is not a 75 overall team. I don't care what that says. And then this happened. Deacon Derp isn't here. And uh, he, I, I searched for him for a while and I couldn't find him until I went to the preseason and I finally did find him. And he went to Alabama. He transferred from Jacksonville State to Alabama to be the team's starting quarterback. And that is absolutely ridiculous you were finally going to make this team like on the brink of success because i think it's a really nice roster and you go and transfer to alabama and you know i guess good for him that he's going to be the starting quarterback of alabama but that is just heartbreaking how does alabama need to pluck out jacksonville state starting quarterback from them and you know oddly enough he was an 84 overall last year and now he's an 83 so he went down in overall, but still, he's a, he's a good quarterback. I mean, if Alabama wants him to be the starter, then, you know, that should kind of tell that he's a, he's a pretty good player. But this was a massive year simulating the season. We see Jacksonville State went undefeated in the regular season. Now, this team is a whole lot better than a 75, but I didn't think they'd go undefeated. And they are a top 10 school in the nation after their quarterback transferred away from them. And as you see, not the top two, Alabama, they're also in there. So uh, how crazy would it be to see them meet in the playoffs or whatever? They're going to make their conference championship. And if they win, they're going to get a top four seed. And Alabama's at the one seed right now. So, you know, it's pretty crazy that this actually could happen. Heisman winner is going to be a USC quarterback. And unfortunately, Jacksonville State did lose their conference championship to Tulane. Tulane's a really good team. But 
it didn't matter. They made the playoffs, and they're facing Alabama. I, you can't script this. I did not do anything. Actually, unbelievable to see that happen. I took over Alabama because I want to hop in and just kind of see if it's close. If it's close, we'll kind of spectate it a little bit. I want to at least, you know, have that experience. But Deacon Dirth, he could have been Jacksonville State's savior. Instead, he just hops on the Alabama bandwagon, and he got just as far. But we're going to hop into this game. If there's anything to show you, I will show it to you. And, you know, we're just going to super sim and just kind of spectate. I, I don't know if this team is going to have much of a chance against Alabama but we're gonna see hitting the super sim Alabama 7 7 14 7 after one can they at least keep it close going into halftime Alabama is going to make it a 21 7 game that'll be the score going into half still doable but they're really outmatched Alabama's going to just pad it up 28 31 to 7 and that's good to be game Jacksonville State's not going to be able to make that comeback but I will say Making the playoffs from a one-star school is way more than I would have anticipated. I was really worried going into this that like nobody was going to do anything and everyone was just going to be stuck at one to two star like purgatory and be garbage. But I'm happy to see that one team at least kind of broke through Deacon Dirth one player of the game, which is just insult to injury. But I don't know if this is just kind of an anomaly season or they're going to be back here. If they actually will go and make the playoffs once more, I have no problem putting them into like a higher conference. I think they'd be in like the ACC. Stanford wins the national championship. Deacon Dirth got eliminated immediately after we did not win coach of the year too which is certainly something i feel like we could have earned coach of the year but also stanford did do pretty good too deacon dearth he came fifth in heisman but we do got other teams to pay attention to obviously jacksonville state was amazing going 12 and 2 but i thought charlotte you know could be a little bit better rice is really disappointing me another four win season They've been really bad, but New Mexico State had an eight-win season. Arkansas State was really nice. They had a double-digit win season as well. You know, other teams like Georgia Southern, Georgia State, they had winning seasons. New Mexico and New Mexico State, they both had winning seasons. So in terms of overall success... This was the strongest year, and not only that, we see New Mexico win a conference championship. Three of our teams made conference title games, so in terms of overall success, yeah, Jacksonville State was the big winners here, but everyone kind of stepped it up a little bit. Arkansas State, Georgia Southern both made bowl games and won them. A lot of our other teams didn't really win their bowl games, but still having you know, over half your schools make bowl games, have winning records, have nice seasons. So from the last two years previously, it wasn't looking very good, but this season really seen some of these teams have big years. And we also had a big draft winner. We talked about that guy earlier, Juan Angel, first round pick. Unfortunately, Rice hasn't been able to do much of anything with these classes, which so far they've averaged out to have the best classes. And once again, here they are, 66. I mean, you know, getting 50s and 60s in classes isn't anything special, but you expect to have more than four wins every season in a non-Power 5 conference. So, you know, a team like Jacksonville State, for example, they're doing a whole lot better and they're getting way worse classes. They were all the way down at 99th. And overall, because the classes are kind of reflecting off the previous season and your team prestige, only three teams were in the top 100. So not a whole lot of excitement there from the classes. But look at Charlotte. I think Charlotte could be a really nice team this year. And both them and Jacksonville State are in the same conference. So could be seeing some battles here. And you expect Jacksonville State with this roster having 290 overall running backs to be pretty nice. I don't think the roster looks quite as strong in the top end but you know they're gonna be pretty decent next year and they're gonna be starting off ranked wise way higher than they were previously i can't say i'm anticipating another 12 and 0 season but moving on to the next season when i take control of these teams i don't do anything i advance the week to start the season as alabama and just the number one overall player in the nation just committed i i don't do anything with these teams i, I just simulate the season I advance to the regular season and instantly Alabama just gets the number one player in the nation. Like just super easy mode game there. That That's crazy. But Jacksonville State did have another big year. They went 11 and one. So they did not get the 12 and 0 season, but they finished really high up there. So 
I, Jacksonville State actually might be here to stay. And also, look at that Ohio Bobcat team. I don't know if they're actually going to be a 73 overall team because some of these overalls do lie a bit, but Jacksonville State is playoff bound again. I said Charlotte was going to be pretty nice. They were the only team to beat Jacksonville State, but unfortunately, they only went 6-6. Six and six. So a lot of these teams that I thought would be pretty decent have kind of underwhelmed Charlotte, Rice, Another wide receiver goes and wins Heisman with 23 touchdowns. Seems to be a pretty common trend. But this time around, Jacksonville State did win their conference championship. And back into the playoffs, they are going to go. This time, though, they have a first round bye and they are taking on Michigan. They almost got to take on Ohio, which would have given them probably a much better chance at a victory. But they don't got to play on the road at Alabama, which should be a lot better. Still, Michigan is going to be the better team. They are a couple overalls higher. We're going to see if this one could be a lot closer than it was last time where this is going to be a pretty low scoring game 3-0 to end the first quarter so we get into the second quarter at least they're not getting blown out by halftime they're up 7-3 okay might they have a playoff win on their hands it's halftime it's 7-6 to six. they are winning a very low scoring game though they could do this they have 290 overall running backs just run the ball as 7-6 still, 14-6 and the end of the third quarter. They are up by 8 going into the fourth. Can they actually pull this off? It's 12-14. to And now we're going to just see if we could take this maybe play by play a little bit to see if we have an opportunity to hop in. If there's something to see. If they have a chance in the red zone. Get a big third down situation. Moving it slowly. They're going down the field. If they can get in the end zone, I think the game might be over. They get into the red zone second down third down we're gonna hop in here can they convert a big third down to get into goal to go they get the catch but it's fourth and inches and they're gonna kick the field goal i think they could have went for it there but they're gonna kick the field goal leave it up to their defense to make a big stop and with michigan now all the way inside the 40 yard line can they get the big stop here two and a half minutes to play man in motion drop him back to throw i don't even know who the players are at this point because everyone at this point's an auto generated player I, I don't know who these guys are so hand off to the running back who's gonna go up past the 25 come on defense i'm rooting for jacksonville state i want to see one of these teams go to a national championship they throw it inside the 10 inside the five they are into goal to go situation two minute warning approaching first and goal drop into throw end zone and that one cut off really quick but it's incomplete second down and goal man in motion hand off to the running back he's gonna go right side untouched end zone for the touchdown and that's gonna be michigan on top we're gonna have to hop in and see if they could do something on offense we go to third down and 15 dropping back to throw and it's going to be intercepted no and it's gonna be michigan going the other way they really could have went for it on that fourth and inches and instead of kicking the field goal instead they're gonna go down 18 to 17 and I think, I think at least they showed that they could compete in these big games. Like, they didn't just, you know, form a bad conference and, you know, beat up on bad teams. They, they were able to actually come out here, succeed third down. They were going to throw, and it's going to be caught for the first to officially end it. But they went head-to-head -head with Michigan. So, I think after these back-to-back -back seasons, only losing one game in the American Athletics these past two years, I think they have done more than enough to warrant a move up to a Power 5 conference. And we're going to see if they can finish strong to close these 10 years out. Michigan wound up making it all the way to the national championship but they lost to purdue and when we take a look at what our other teams did we didn't have another team like an arkansas state go and get double digit wins our next best team was south alabama who had nine wins new mexico had nine wins we've seen teams like georgia state with two wins georgia southern with three wins and not a whole lot of success from the rest of our schools it kind of seems like right now we're kind of hedging all of our bets on jacksonville state to go out here and win a playoff game or do something because they are the team that's going to give us the best chance to see a lot of success and once again we see rice be really bad despite having like the best recruiting class among all these schools also add an award to the tally for jacksonville state they get best defensive back conference championship we've seen jacksonville state already won theirs kennesaw state made it and lost theirs arkansas state new mexico old dominion south alabama all with bowl victories kennesaw state and charlotte with bowl losses and we see a couple of players get drafted we've seen 
players get drafted from seven different schools. So once again, we see a bit more variety and we even see three different schools get themselves into day two, which is pretty nice. So not just random seventh round picks, but actual quality players being taken by a couple of these schools. And then I would have thought with a team like Jacksonville State making the playoffs last season, that they would have gotten a better recruiting class, but somehow, once again, Rice did better. Could someone please explain to me what the appeal of going to Rice is and why all these players want to go to Rice compared to other schools and why they routinely underperform? Because once again, Rice goes out, has the best recruiting class of all these 13 schools, and they're probably just going to win four or five games again next year. But Jacksonville State, surprisingly, made the playoffs last season, made the playoffs this season, and then goes against the 75th recruiting class. Despite that, they still have a really nice roster. I think a roster that's definitely better than the one that they had last year. And this is a school that's going to have a lot of players drafted, I feel like. And I'm very confident in saying that they're going to be able to succeed in the ACC, moving them up to a Power 5 conference. I don't anticipate 12-0, 11-1. They're probably going to take their losses because it's a pretty good conference. But moving them into the ACC is going to help them out, not just with the recruiting and the rankings and everything, but just their overall prestige. And they did really good in this season. They went and won 10 games the next year. And, you know, obviously not the 12 wins or 11 wins, but they are in the conference championship in the ACC. So they are actually doing very well they're holding up and they are a legit school now now they did go out and lose their conference championship and they will be having to play west virginia in the first round of the playoffs but they have another chance to come out here and win a playoff game they got smacked by alabama came really close to beating michigan can the third time be the charm? Can they actually come out here and win a playoff game? They've already far surpassed our expectations for them, but come on, win a playoff game. They're on the road. It's going to be a 0-0 first quarter start. These games have been pretty low scoring, but can they actually put some points up on the board? It seems like they've had great running backs every single year. Halftime, it is 0-0, but they are in this game. Can they actually do something here? Give us something to watch. It's 3-0. Finally, first points put on the board. 10-0. 17-0. And just like that, West Virginia is running away with the game. 24-0. And it's going to be 0-3 for Jacksonville State in the playoffs. That's just... That's unfortunate. I mean, I don't know what happened here with the offense, but man, 0-0 for the first half. And then all of a sudden, West Virginia just goes out and puts up 31 points. Kentucky was like 24th in the nation. They just go sneak into the playoffs and win the whole thing. So cool for them, I guess. But looking at the rest of the teams, you know, Jacksonville State 10 and 4 overall, not quite as successful though conference championship to their name. No other team even made a conference championship. So there's not a lot to report on there. South Alabama, though, did go out there and have their best season winning 10 games. So overall win percentage wise, South Alabama kind of went out there and had the best season. But obviously we know Jacksonville State is out here do having the most success. But a 1 and 11 record from Georgia State is going to be the worst that we see, probably. I don't think a team's going to do worse than that. Uh, bowl games, South Alabama won theirs, Old Dominion won theirs, Arkansas State lost theirs, and we see Jacksonville State having a lot of drafted players getting some first round talents out there. So they are running away with the draft success too, as now they have had multiple first round picks and elsewhere, not a whole lot else for the draft success. And finally, we see Jacksonville State get a decent recruiting class for a team that has had you know, three straight playoff appearances, 40th is still not anything spectacular, but getting a few four stars, getting a bunch of quality players, it's still pretty decent, and they've been able to work with a whole lot less. Other recruiting classes aren't giving you a whole lot to go excited for. Even Rice didn't have like a top 60 class like they do every single season, so no one else really competed with Jacksonville State in the recruiting aspect of things. And we got one final year where Jacksonville State is going to have a crazy player here let's take a look at this a 99 overall three star running back i haven't simmed a whole lot i don't know how likely or how possible this is 
but man, a three-star player becoming a 99 overall seems nuts because the recruiting in this game, you can't just get anybody and make them good. It's not like they're getting a guaranteed plus five or six every single season. So it really is dependent on how good they start off with their dev traders and everything. But getting a 99 overall player who is just a three-star, I need to know who's developing players here at Jacksonville State because they are doing a phenomenal job. You could also see right there, they are a four-star star school from one star to four star and from nobody to a 99 overall running back where they will once again make the playoffs we're just kind of wrapping things up here in the final season with jacksonville state because i mean that's the team everyone's kind of rooting for no other team really got in the mix here and we are going to see if this team can finally win a playoff game i guess that's the final thing we can really see here as they are playing nc state this time they are having it at home they played two road games had a first round bye this time Time. they are finally playing a playoff game at home they are down 7-0 in the first quarter can this jacksonville state team not make it four in a row they get three points on the board they get six now it is going to be 10 to 6 10 to 9 at halftime and will they even give us anything to hop in and see we've only been able to hop into the michigan game 17 to 9 20 to 9 and it's going to be an 11 point game if they can maybe get this to a one score game we could have something to hop into and they get an interception here that's going to be pretty big for them are they going to be able to get the football back down by eight can they get a one score game with the ball in their hands they are gonna get the football back if they get close maybe we hop in but they're going to just give the football right back and it's going to be basically down to their defense to get a stop here and they are not going to do it it's going to be a 15 point game with under four minutes to play they need to put the ball in the end zone they don't turn it over and it's going to be a north carolina ball and it's going to be potentially a north carolina win here at jacksonville state with one last desperation try they're not going to do it that's really disappointing four straight seasons of the playoffs four straight playoff losses i could say that yeah it's incredible that they were able to go from one star to playoffs in basically like six years but man four straight playoff appearances without a single win is very disappointing if we want a positive note to end on for jacksonville state they did get some awards in their favor best overall defensive player goes to them they also had the best defensive back in the entire nation and they had the lombardi award winner so they're going to have a couple of awards to stock up on and they basically won more awards in this one season than every other team did combined so i mean that's going to have them win the award section of things and really we know at this point jacksonville state is the overall winner as they did for a better than any of the other 12 teams did but we still have a bunch of things to tally up as we kind of take a peek at the final season and what all these teams did in their final year you know a couple of teams were able to have a little bit of success arkansas state had their best season 11 and 3 so that that was a really good season from them you know they got a bowl win championship victory in the conference but let's get to the final tally. I kind of broke these guys up all into tiers of success. I'm going to break down their entire win-loss record over the 10 years, their records in bowl games, titles, average ranking in, you know, recruiting classes, and their NFL players. Tier 5 is going to be these four teams, teams that I felt like not only did they not go anywhere, they just went backwards it felt like as even in kent state's case they went down to half a star prestige and none of them even hit that two star level they are teams that won four to five games a year in new mexico state's case they were the only team to not win a bowl game all of them nowhere near top 100 recruiting classes over the course of a 10-year period georgia southern's case they probably had the argument for the worst team in this as they only won 40 games which was the least had zero players drafted, only team to have that distinction, never made a conference championship, never got a four-star player, only Kent State even seen a bit of success getting a four-star player having a first-round draft pick, but all these teams were very, very poor. This next tier, tier four, being teams that I felt like kind of stayed the same, had a good year or two, but 
ultimately just are going to stick at that one star level and there's some missed opportunities here i felt like charlotte had a good roster a couple of times i showed you some of their talent that they would have they had six players drafted in one year when you have the nfl talent that they had they had 11 players drafted which i believe turned out to be the second most rice too they had a first round player they had consistently the best recruiting classes overall they finished second but, I mean, from day one all the way to the end, you've seen them 60th and 50th recruiting classes, and comparing that to Georgia State, who was dead last in recruiting classes. Out of 134 teams, they averaged out to be the 129th recruiting class on a year-to-year -year basis, which could be the worst if I actually kept track of all of the teams. That, that might have been the worst. So, despite the lack of talent, they sent a player to the NFL, made five bowls, so, like... When it came to the talent development, if you had Rice's recruiting classes with Georgia State's utilization of them, they might have been a pretty good team, but Rice couldn't capitalize on the talent that they had. Georgia State maximized them, but didn't have any talent. Both of them ended up with 52 wins, so that's really interesting to see. Charlotte didn't do much. Old Dominion had that one season to start where they won the conference championship, didn't do anything beyond that, but really interesting to see the dynamics between Georgia State and Rice going back to back and winning the same amount of games despite the huge discrepancy in recruiting classes. Tier 3 is going to see the winners and a group of teams that I felt like took some positive steps towards improving their overall school for the next decade potentially as all of them had winning records. Yeah, the bowl game victories weren't that good, 2-6, two 2-5 and six, two and five for New Mexico and South Alabama, but making a bowl game 70 and 80% of the time is pretty good and they were consistently in the mix and consistently winning six to seven games every year that's eventually going to you know favor you over the course of time if you just have a winning record every year and then in Kennesaw State's case they were a team that just peaked at the right times and had some good seasons they had that 12 and 2 year had a coach of the year offensive coordinator of the year they had a couple of nice four-star players as you know three straight years they recruited four stars so they had you know some nice peaks but ultimately these schools are teams that had winning records but didn't really make a big leap into the next tier of teams weren't able to break through weren't able to have consistently great seasons you know the conference championship success only one conference championship for Kennesaw State and New Mexico, NFL talent, each of them produced four. So they are teams that are going to be potentially in the middle of the pack of the nation, but I do think did positive things over the course of the 10 years. And finally, we have the top two tiers. I didn't want to put these two schools in the same tier because obviously Jacksonville State was the winner and was better, but I wanted to showcase both of them here at the same time. And just to kind of show just the discrepancy between what the number one and number two school was, Arkansas State did pretty well. They ended up getting to two and a half star prestige, won 73 games. Despite never getting a four star, they won the most bowl games of any of these teams, five, sent eight players to the NFL, won three conference championships. It's pretty good for a team that, again, never got a four star player. And I think if we went a couple more years, we could have gotten to the point where they were moving up. I think they were making a slow climb. And then obviously there's Jacksonville State. 88 wins in 10 seasons, averaging almost 9 a year, had 13 four-star prospects. A lot of those obviously came at the end. You know, title games, obviously they didn't win the conference that much, but they were at the point where they were playing in the ACC and... You know, two conference championships is solid, won two bowl games. Unfortunately, the 0-4 in the playoffs does hurt them, but, I mean, they made the playoffs four straight years. That is something that is way beyond what we would have expected for a one-star school. NFL talent sent two players in the first round, 13 players overall, and by the end of things, did end up getting the average highest-ranking recruiting class, 69th in the nation, but for a school that was middle of the pack in recruiting classes they made the playoffs four straight times they sent players to the nfl they, their talent development was nuts i mean you've seen a three-star running back become a 99 overall that is spectacular so i mean it was really fun to see that a one-star school if you simulate enough or if things go the right way they can become really good ultimately that was the goal can one of these one-star teams break through and become great well the answer is yes it can happen it, one of them did, the other 12, 
for the most part, not so much, but you know, mission successful. And if you guys enjoyed the video, it'd be much appreciated if you gave a like, subscribe, or just comment what you thought of this entire challenge and let me know what kind of challenges you wanna see. If you wanna see me do some sort of rebuild, let me know if you wanna see me do any sort of challenges with one star schools, five star schools, anything in between. I'm down for whatever, so let me know what you wanna see. And I hope you guys all enjoyed and I will see you guys all in the next one.